Okay, so today I have something very exciting, at least for me as a music aficionado or sound lover in general, Yamaha MusicCast. I will talk about what it is, what it does and how it works. But in case you already know all of that, you could watch the second video that I'm going to release about the Yamaha Chorus, which is the actual hardware that you use with this whole system, in case you want to know that. But in this video, I want to talk about the app and how it actually changed my experience in terms of music in my house because this is the, the weirdest part I never held on to a review unit as long as this time for over three months now and the reason was just I didn't want to part ways with it because once I made the video I have to return it which actually isn't really an issue because I will just buy a few parts of that anyways that I need and the worst part that fortunately enough didn't happen is that I went to IFA 2017 and talked about it because otherwise I, w I think I would still live in the stone ages instead of now living in the future. And I know this sounds really weird, but someone who never experienced network speakers before, it's very hard to grasp, and actually, at least for me, because once Yamaha asked me if I want to get a little bit of an interview, talk with them about an IFA, about their multi-room speaker system, multicast, I thought, nah, I'm not really that interested, but okay, let's just do it, because what else have I to lose? Oh, I would have lost so much, because... Yamaha MusicCast, my first gripe about it is I thought this is just another Sonos competitor, so multi-room, wireless speakers and so on. And that's actually the first thing that I said to my contact. I said, the problem is I have to buy into the whole ecosystem, which is very expensive. I have to replace all my speakers. And the first thing that he said actually completely already changed my thinking about it. He said, no, you don't have to. Why? I said, yeah, but I need those speakers. He said, no, in case you don't want to use new speakers in your system or whatever you want to use just do one thing, buy the MusicCast, I don't know quite the name, it's a little box that makes your dumb hi-fi system or whatever system you have into a smart one compatible with MusicCast. And this made me curious and that's why I got the Yamaha Chorus actually in for review, which is a, a three-parted system, so a soundbar, this little speaker for example, which isn't small and is amazing, this is the one that I definitely want to, and then for example this one, the soundbar I can't really show, but... I would say, before I'm going a little, little bit into more, let's see what actually MusicCast everything includes. Now here you can see MultiCast, the software. You can use this with an app, which is absolutely necessary, at least in the first place. But this is what made it so interesting for me, because what you have here, once I find my mouse cursor, are AV receivers that are compatible with MusicCast, wireless speakers, sound bars, wireless streaming apps, hi-fi receivers, and powered network speakers. This is the really interesting part that I completely misjudged at first. And maybe even more so interesting is what you can do with it and what it actually is compatible with. Because as you can see, MusicCast Chorus, Wi-Fi certified, DLNA, Bluetooth, AirPlay. AirPlay is something actually that I never used before and I definitely want more of it. It's great. Of course, iPad compatible VTuner, Spotify, Juke, Napster, something else, Cube, <laughs> I don't know, Rhapsody, Sirius XM, Pandora, DAB+, Air Surround, Dolby Audio, DTS. So as you can see, this is a very compatible system. And here, for example, are some of the speakers that I will review. But this whole system, and that's the interesting part, just works through an app and once you have these devices like for example the bluetooth speaker uh, i mean the wireless speaker for the vx 10 it really comes down to how you use software uh, audio because what i actually did and therefore i have to kind of get a little bit further back into how i use music or audio and how me you maybe use it how this could actually change your behavior because it completely did mine i cannot use a normal bluetooth speaker in my house anymore okay the benefit of a bluetooth speaker is that it's usually battery powered and you can take it wherever you want to but as long as you're in your house there is no need for that because if you have one of these network speakers in every room that you usually need it you're done because the great thing is actually it's powered through the ac outlet and therefore you they are always on and the most important part is convenience and the app i will go into a little bit later but i just have to explain my experience because for example in my bedroom when i test laptops or phones and so on or tablets or in my living room, what I usually do is I use a Bluetooth speaker. But the problem is pretty much every Bluetooth speaker pretty much just connects to one device at a time and every time you have to repair and it's a very inconvenient uh, experience. It's very annoying. And this is actually where the, the, the network speakers here come in 
and already work way better just as a Bluetooth speaker because actually a lot of the time that I've used it was on a laptop connected just working via Bluetooth and this just in terms of convenience already is so much more important than any Bluetooth speaker and that's why I don't want to use them not even thinking about the fact that they sound a lot better. The thing is you can to this wireless connector through, through Bluetooth if you just for example set it once to Bluetooth because we have a lot of other things that I have to show in the software later. You connect it and now the greatest part. Whenever you open that device, for example the laptop or you turn on the phone or you turn on the tablet, it already connects to the last source it was connected. And in my case, for example, if I have multiple, this is the great part, multiple laptops in my house connected, it just connects to the last one that was connected. And if I don't want that, I just go into the Windows settings, for example, or wherever else and disconnect disconnect the connection not to disconnect the pairing which is important because then it will just connect to the beforehand connected device and if i just want to reverse it once again i just disconnect the connection and get to the next one so i don't ever need to repair and actually maybe that's also the greatest thing once you set up one of these speakers you don't have to ever do anything again you can plug it out you can use it in any other room plug it in and all your settings are already stored again since they never get lost, they are there and you can use this. And this is the great part because I use them in my bedroom, in my living room and so on, in my kitchen. And now I just hook them up here in my studio and I didn't have to change anything. This is so good. And I'm getting a little bit overly um, excited because this is so much more convenient, especially if you move around a lot of your house. Because what I did back then in the past, if I was in one room, listen to, for example, a podcast or on a laptop, and I wanted to switch into my kitchen, I had to take the laptop, of course, with me to see what I'm actually looking at, the video and so on, but also had to take, in some cases, the very heavy Bluetooth speaker as well with me. So that wasn't a great experience. Now, what you can just do is take the laptop and once you're in the room, you just switch to that the speaker that you have in that room. And it connects and it just works. It works through Wi-Fi. So you usually don't have the limitations of Bluetooth audio sound. If you use the Bluetooth connection, of course, then it works a little bit different, but I didn't really notice a difference. And this alone, the fact that I can connect so many devices is pretty much an unlimited am amount of devices to the speaker system and just then switch it. Or for example, once what I will get is the, 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 the AV receiver connector, I will just plug it to my old AV receiver that just doesn't support any sort of streaming services or anything and it will just do that. And I don't want to drag this too long, but you kind of have to kind of see the potential. Also AirPlay, I never used AirPlay before with my iPad Air 2. What you can do is you just open the iPad and then on the iPad Air Play sections you have all the speakers that are connected. You select which one and the music plays. What I had for a while is that there was a synchronization issue. So it wasn't quite in sync with the audio and the video for some reason. That's gone, which is good. And what you can, of course, also do is use them usually also on, I think, everyone with an Ethernet cable in case maybe your Wi-Fi isn't that good. I used it primarily with Wi-Fi all the time. I had some, some minor cutouts here and there sometimes on the VX010, um, but actually this was also fixed and this is more of a Wi-Fi issue. But just because of that, you are not limited to Bluetooth audio sound, so you get a way better sound quality and you have all those things supported. And I, I have to now actually go into the software. We're actually not the biggest fan of in some ways, but as you can see here, so this is the main software. As you can see, I have three devices at the moment, bedroom, kitchen, and studio. You can, of course, link them if you want to make a party and have music playing the same in all the rooms. Of course, in the settings, you can have the extra settings for every device. You can extra, this is German, but it doesn't matter. And now here's the great part. If you go into bedroom, and this is all customizable, here are my music sources, for example. What I can do is I can just go to last, I have playlists, favorites, and also from this phone. So I could just play, if I hit this, music from this phone over my Wi-Fi on any speaker I want to. But here are the actual sources, and that's the important part. And there are a lot, I just used these five, so I turned off the rest. Because I have server, I have airplay. I have, actually you don't really have to even select this because it does it pretty much every time automatically. Auto, a Bluetooth, like I said, is very handy for laptops and such. Net radio and of course Spotify. Now, here is my one gripe. If you want to use Spotify, you just use it actually through the Spotify app. 
So you don't have to readjust or anything. But here's my problem with server. For example, I have a Logitech media server running due to my squeeze box. Of course, picture and video doesn't work, but music does work. And here it doesn't really matter that you can't read it. But for example, let's go to artists. What you see are the artists. This is nice. But my issue already starts with one thing. It's great that it actually supports new music, which is a thing of Logitech software. But here is my big issue with this software. Because this is the counterpart that I use with my squeeze box, which is unfortunately a system that died out, which is an app called Orange Squeeze. And this app, I think Yamaha should just hire these people because this app is so much better than anything I've used when it comes to music control. And that's why I still even use this, even though I don't have squeeze boxes everywhere. But as you can see, the biggest difference is, and it doesn't ma matter about the layout, but my issue with MusicCast is, if I go to new music, it shows me all the recently added albums that I have. But as you can see, I only see the album name, but here on the squeeze box app in small, I can only also see which band it is from. So I personally never really remember which album is which artist, so please, if anyone from Yamaha is seeing this, change this option as well, because maybe just hire these guys, because this app I paid like four or five bucks and they updated even still today. I got an update just a few days ago and this is the best way to control it. So if I would have this app working with MusicCast, it would be a dream come true, because the next thing also is already, if I want to just play this album, I can't just long press or do anything. Actually it does. Okay, that yeah, but wait, I have to go back to artists because this works this is the issue wait give me a sec so artists on both so as you can see now if i long press i can't just play this album i can't or the the whole artist album library as you can see it just pops up and nothing happens if i for example go on the same thing i was at skylight drive what I could do is I just hit this little thing and this is just a connection issue right at the moment because my Wi-Fi here isn't all that strong. But as you can see, now it pops up and I can play everything from that artist and also add to the playlist and so on, or I can just long press. And here I have to go actually in and even now I can't do more than just play it and add to the music cast waiting list and so on. I can't just say I want to play all of them, which is not an issue here because here I just before could have changed it or just play all titles, as you can see here. So this makes it very inconvenient. The also the next thing is every time you, for example, would now press and I don't want to play because of copyrights. And actually I turned on my, that was so bright. I turned off the, the flashlight. So, um, yeah. If I add an app, every time lands, if I go into the music in a, a, a waiting list or a playlist and it adds and adds and adds to it and I don't get why it just doesn't overwrite that every time because I would just want to play this but this way what happens every time the playlist just gets longer and longer and I have to manually delete it which is just so inconvenient. It just doesn't make any sense to me. So. If they would change these two things, maybe add to the to the artists or to the album in the new music section, or at least every time let me know what is going on, because this is a little bit weird. You can, of course, use also DLNA and so on, but once you are in a playlist, you can't just say, I want to switch to this playlist and get back to the other. So the software definitely needs some work. So once again, please just hire the guys from Orange Squeeze or tell them to make this app, pay them no matter what you want, because this will make the app so much more handy because of course, and I say because way too much, someone already told me this. Here you can see all your connected players. You can of course change the layout, how it looks. You can rearrange them. As you can also see here, you have some scenes. For example, if you want to always play these two speakers and you can, of course, kind of have a stereo arrangement in this personal settings, you have some other things. As you can see, firmware changes, auto standby, you can change the sources here because you have, of course, net radio, Bluetooth, Spotify, Napster, Juke, Cubas, Tidal, and Deezer. Unfortunately, though, and this is also something that I would have liked to have seen, is maybe Google Play Music. The other thing is, if you are in that particular app for example let's say bluetooth now and i want to change the settings here i could now even change the sound signature of that speaker of course that's a thing that is different on any speaker but this is the software 
and it works because I actually didn't use the music feature itself where I select it because it just is a little bit not that convenient because I don't know always what's playing and I have to rearrange it. This is not that great. What is great is that it connects to everything. And in some way, most of the time, I just used it as a better Bluetooth speaker because it sounded way better. The connection was way easier every time. I could use AirPlay. I could use everything. I could just easily use this with any TV and so on. And this is why I'm just going to at least buy two of these because this, for the price and the size, sounds ridiculously good. And I don't really need more than two at first because I want to use one in my kitchen where this one would be more handy because it even has a clock and it looks a little bit nicer if you would just tuck it to the wall. But it's also more expensive and it has DAB plus, which I don't need. The soundbar I will go into in the review as well. And what I will also get is the, the receiver for the hi-fi system so I can actually make my very old receiver still streaming compatible and bring to the new ages. Because <laughs> So just to narrow it down. I don't know how Sonos works and there are other different competitors, for example, some other brands that have similar streaming solutions or network solutions, multi-room solutions, but I haven't tried them. But from what I can see, Yamaha is on the right path with really allowing you to just use whatever you have and make it MusicCast compatible. Because I've seen that it doesn't really work so well because I can't just use Sonos software with my old speakers as far as I know. If you can, just maybe let me know because I think, and I say it because really way too often, that they offer the better app. So this is definitely something that I want to get improved because the whole system works out great you could use wireless speakers with an ethernet connection or with wireless which didn't really have any issues with mine you you can use it on whatever this is really a great thing i don't have to replace any of my systems and i can then just go come on come in with a laptop in my living room and if i want to hear that sound on my home theater system no issues at all if i want to do this in my hi-fi studio uh, hi-fi room i can't do this if i do this here i can't do this there is no setup available or necessary once you have done the initial one, which is great. You can switch very easily because if you want to play music through one, you just select the player. For example, if I just switch the room, I just turn on this and then say this resource. And this is so convenient. And I'm going to try to get the multi-room speakers for some other because... This is such an interesting idea because this is I was so completely disconnected all the years ago when I had I had to use a Bluetooth speaker and every time I had to connect to this and if I go into another room I had to either take it with me or disconnect and uh, clusterfuck. This actually kind of genius and it's it's well supported they have it already for years if you have a Yamaha a kind of recent Yamaha receiver you already have this feature and. Quality-wise, in terms of sound, they also look very good because Yamaha, I, okay, I have to say that I used two Yamaha receivers for almost 20 years. Since then, the Yamaha receivers, I really like what they do in terms of sound. And this definitely shows here on these products. But if you want to know how these turn out, just maybe watch the second video here, the Yamaha Chorus review. But otherwise, it's so good. It, it changed my perspective on audio because <laughs> this is actually, actually that I did so many times if I have a laptop and I review it and I'm not big a fan of the speakers but I don't want to every time set up the Bluetooth speakers I just use the crappy sound but now I just open up the laptop and it automatically is and I don't have to do anything just connect it to that once I had that set up and I can then listen to very very good sound on a usually not that good sound of a laptop and it, it made my life a lot easier. It made the experience not just better, but also more pleasurable due to having better sound. Because these, this for its size sounds way better than any Bluetooth speaker that I've tried so far. Absolutely. But I don't want to drag this any further because I think 19 minutes are enough. The whole musical system is great. And I'm not just saying this. I don't, I don't know why I would, but <laughs> I'm, I'm an audio fan. But... I always went the old school route of having everything set up singly, maybe connected. This, this is actually the great thing. I don't have any of my other speakers connected to the network, so I have access to my whole music library everywhere. But with this system, you absolutely have. You can use any NAS 
just plug it into your router and it's available. This is actually a good thing because I thought I maybe need a special library or a special app like I do with Logitech. But no, I can just use DLNA. I could, and this is also something that I did not expect. I can just use my old Squeezebox software, which simply still works the best and all this. So if they would maybe kind of make Spotify the way Spotify works compatible with Orange Squeeze, they wouldn't even have to change the app. So maybe that's a th tip. But yeah, no, that's it. And I really enjoy this product. And yeah, until next time.